Windows. Uh, it's the OEMs who are buying. It's companies like Dell and HP who are buying Windows and then imposing them on Windows if they want to buy the hardware. If you want to buy a motherboard integrated with the, the drives and everything else, you have to get Windows with it because they bought it from Microsoft. I don't think with Android you have quite the same component. I mean, people can always just go and buy an iPhone or they could buy a Symbian phone or something if, if they still exist. So quite, it's probably quite hard to find them now. But the uh, the fact is they do sell pretty well. And, and I, one of the things I, I kind of encourage people to do when they, they see all the surveys is, is check very carefully who pays for these because the way these companies that do this work, and just generally speaking, not specifically about the examples you mentioned, is is there is a client and he pays, he basically says what he wants to see and they find some way of showing that. So all of these surveys, uh, customer satisfaction, and you know, they could approach certain parts of the population to get the required results. So I, I, maybe you're right. Maybe they're more satisfied with the iPhone. I don't, I don't know. But uh, in any case, the sales, what we do know is, and this is really easy to count, we know that more uh, Android phones are selling now than iPhones, even in the United States, which is a one of the markets that used to be the you know, the best markets for Apple. Well, and, and I, Apple still is growing tremendously on their iPhone and, and their tablet, their iOS devices. And so, yeah, you know, <coughs> who's, excuse me, who's being hurt by that? Who's losing out on these sales? Is it, is it Apple or someone else? Probably I think Nokia. there's room for both. Yeah, I think Nokia is losing quite a bit now. What we'll do, because we often talk about phones on, on this, I know, understand that Michael uh, has got a couple of questions that he wants to put as well. Now, since Michael was very kind um, in coming on the show, and uh, it's been quite a short notice show as well in terms of uh, we did intend originally to record at 5 o'clock and then uh, things changed and we sort of jumped into the show very quickly. This has been a bit of a surprise for Michael as well because originally it was intended just as a separate section on its own. And then... Um, He's come on that. He's come on for the for a whole show and talk about some of the things that are in the news. So, Michael, if you haven't got anything else to add to what previously Roy just said, I'll offer you the opportunity uh, now. If you've got some questions that you would like to throw back at uh, at Roy, since I, I'm more the third wheel in this uh, audio cast, I'll, uh, I'll 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 put it over to you, Michael. Well, for, let me just wrap up on the Android. If Android ends up coming up with a product that's as good as what Apple has and it can be had for cheaper then Apple deserves to lose market share, and that's what should happen. And if there's both of them in the market, there's competition, and I think that's great. And so, yes, I pretend to prefer Mac products or Apple products, but but I have no dog in this race. And and if something came around tomorrow that was better than, than the computer I use, I'd jump, well, it wouldn't be tomorrow that I'd jump ship, but there's time. You get the idea. I would jump ship to whatever serves me best. Right. I'm not I'm not in it for iOS. I'm not in it for Mac if Android serves me next best, I won't get a new iPod Touch when this one wears out. I, well, this one I got free when I bought a Mac. I wouldn't have bought it anyway. But I'd get an Android device, and, and I might get one anyway just to learn it better. But yeah. anyway. One of the things Tim and I like to talk about before we uh, get to the questions, uh, we like to talk about the use of patents in the whole race, especially uh, the case of Apple and Microsoft suing Android makers and trying to make money out of them or trying to block the competition. And this is one of the issues I generally have problem with, problem with, because they don't really want the market to decide or for the better, you know, for the technically better product to, to succeed. They want to introduce this kind of extra thick layer of legislation uh, to basically impede the competition. And this is one of the issues that I've had with Apple since 2010 and turned a bit sour against the company because I realized Apple was not really in it to, to play fair. So... Uh, I just wonder if you have anything to, to say about that. I have some questions. That's actually where I was going to head a little bit. So, so you're reading. Really, if, that, if, if that's the case, then if that's the case, what we'll do, we'll cut to one more song, and then Michael, once we come back from the song, Michael can come back with his questions, and we'll uh, we'll carry on from there. Because um, I'm quite aware of the time, and I'm quite aware. Apparently, the uh, best length for an audio cast is an hour and a half, because after that, people start to switch off. So we want to try and keep it as compact as possible, and obviously give Michael the opportunity to ask everything he wants to ask and make all these points so without further ado we'll pass straight over to roy and he's going to uh, introduce the next song right so the next song is uh, when you are near uh the name of the singer is warren Hood. i look into those eyes of blue i forget what you put me through i can't be mad can't be sad when you are near Cause I let it slide Can't be mad Can't be sad When you are me And I know That you are no good Still I can't leave 
like I know I should Your smile knocks me senseless My poor heart's defenseless Abuse me deep, abuse me deep You know I won't go nowhere Can't be mad, can't be sad Michael Glasser, who's going to be asking some questions. Uh, so, Michael, with that cue, it's over to you and uh, ask away. Oh, now I have to actually get organized over here. <laughs> um, and I, I had a train of thought, and and, and it is somewhat gone, but that's okay. Um, well, with the IP, if a company if a company works for something and they've spent a lot of time and effort and energy building it and has spent X number of million dollars, they then make it public and somebody else just, oh, that's a great idea and takes it. I think they should protect that. Well, I don't know where the line is on a lot of these debates. I do know in some places I think Apple has been right. In other places, like they're, they're arguing that nobody could use the, ner- the name App Store. Frankly, I find that absurd. Um, and there's some of these other ones that I, I don't know the details of them. Apple's probably right in some cases, and Apple is probably not so right in other cases. And same things with Microsoft. I don't think it's quite as cut and dry as you try to present as, well, they're just using inter- intellectual property laws to try to stop everyone. Well, they're, they also have have a lot of research and money and time they've put into this that they don't want others to just, just take from them. The, the cut for you, because, well, first of all, we have to be very specific. When you say intellectual property... You don't refer to any law specifically. You refer to a family of things. So you refer right. to trademarks, copyrights, and, and patents. And we have to separate those because they're very different things inherently. So App Store, that's to do with trademarks. That's them trying to protect how people use their speech. So they say, well, you cannot call this what you want because we'll get angry and we will say, well, people might think you're talking about our product. Uh, copyrights, I don't think they've had any issues with. So nobody is actually trying to take Apple's work. Nobody has actually taken and lifted their code. I think SciStar is one of the only cases where a person was trying to appropriate their operating system and do things with it. That's maybe a case of copyright supply. What they tried to do is to uh, imply that certain things, which in my opinion they didn't actually invent or weren't the first to implement the Respire art, they tried to use patents to uh, attack, to, to basically ban imports of the competitor's products to the United States. Now, so we have to clarify first what we're talking about here. You, you talk about stealing, or you say somebody else takes it, you thinks it's a good idea. Are you talking about things that they claim to have patents on, like the multi, like touching the screen with two fingers at the same time? Well, I, I, I mean, I think it's it's hard. I don't have the details on a lot of the specific patent wars and, and any of these fights going on, so I'm going to keep it a little vague here. But if, if I have spent... Yeah, X million of dollars figuring out gestures that are easiest for people to use. 